It's time for Good Energy and I'm Dr. Julie and welcome to Bodyful Day 241. We are talking about cold extremities and the senses and today is day four and we're talking about the sense of hearing. So in this video we're going to cover how hearing can manipulate that fight or flight response which will then have an effect on your extremities and how you can use hearing to kind of reverse that so that you have the energy to have warmer extremities. All right, let's go ahead and start with our basics. Take a deep breath in and release. With this next deep breath in, make it a big one. Take a breath in and, and expand in the belly, expand in the chest, expand in the sinuses and exhale. And we are talking about the sense of hearing. So I want you to think about, eh, you could think about nails on a chalkboard, but think about any sounds that cause you particular stress, that cause the nervous system to kind of go off the rails, whether it's a screaming child or the sound of your children's fighting escalating. Um, go ahead and put that in your memory and take a deep breath in. and release all right so today is day four we're talking about cold extremities and the senses uh, on day one we talked about the fact that this is related to what's called either renaud syndrome or renaud's phenomenon um, and it can just be generally cold hands and feet but the idea is that we have cold hands and feet and we need to figure out how to make them feel better um, and I remember being about eight, nine, 10, 11, and they said, Hey, you could take this up. You could take this medication and that should increase the warmth in your hands and feet. And I was just was like, eh, I'll just put on more gloves and more socks. We'll see where we're going. The cool thing is that the healing equation kind of gives us a very interesting way to kind of get into that and how to get those hands and feet warmer. So remember our goal is energy to warm your hands and feet equals good energy and minus stressors. And when we talk about those stressors, we need to talk about what are sound stressors that could cause your system to take the blood out of those extremities and into your core. And when we think about sounds, we can think about what we breathed into at the very beginning. Are there any sounds, uh, sirens going off? Um, uh, I know that every once in a while, every Wednesday, first Wednesday of the month at 10 o'clock here in Southeast Iowa, that, that is when the sirens go off when they test them. But I think it was like one o'clock when I was up in the up in Minnesota and so you just kind of you kind of had to get used to the fact that the first Wednesday of the month something was going to happen but it wasn't anything to panic about well it's just one of those things that this is a siren sirens are associated with something not particularly good does that sound cause your fight flight or freeze system to take over Remember we talked about the fact how fight and flight, you've got to have blood flow to do those things. So to get your legs going faster and to get your hands up and start fighting. So blood goes out to those extremities. But if your normal response, your learned, I shouldn't say normal, if your learned response to stress, stressful sounds is, I'm gonna go downstairs in the basement and hide. If your learned response is freeze, then you are going to find that your extremities may be a little more colder than most people when stressful sounds approach. So sirens, kids arguing, um, really bad cello, um, terrible trombone, I don't know. <laughs> these are all stressors. But remember that we're still talking about the fact that these stressors are top down. This isn't bottom up. Remember the only time that sound has a bottom up component is if it's too loud. Then the nervous system automatically shrinks those muscles in your ears and pulls the bones away so that the sound doesn't get into, the, so the sound doesn't go into your cochlea too intensely. But in most cases, the idea that the, um, the testing the tornado siren or the weather siren is 
is tied to worry or stress is learned. You learn that when that goes off, panic is something that should happen. Or maybe you've learned that it's casual and you're just like, yeah, they usually set it off, you know, 20 minutes before anything happens. Um, that reminds me that during the derecho, uh, before the derecho hit, they started it an hour early and they would do it, every, they did it every 15 minutes until the wind hit, until the storm hit. And it was like, why are you doing? Because even when they started it, it was still partly cloudy out. The sun was shining. It was like, what? So, eh, you know, interesting, the top-down connection. When are we actually supposed to learn that this is supposed to be a fearful thing? But it, of course, depends upon how you view that stressor. So what can we do to give good energy in? What can we do with sound that actually helps get blood back out to those extremities? And I'm gonna cheat a little here because it's not actually sound. We, we've, always, we've already talked about that particular low tones are very nervous system calming. When you calm the nervous system, you calm the freeze response, which means blood can go back out to your extremities. But we can also hum, we can sing, we can just la 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 la, we can just tone. And in just singing and toning and just putting music on in the car, what we are doing is that singing is a nervous system calming activity. It is very hard to sing and run. It is very hard to sing and fight. It is very hard to sing and freeze, especially when the freeze response is, I don't want anybody to see me. I don't want to move. I don't want anything to happen to me. Um, so singing is a way of getting you out of that nervous system stress response and into a nervous system calm response. And as I said, if you can't sing or you, you, you feel like you can't sing, um, go ahead and hum or even just uh just pick a noise and stick with it and just kind of load around and you could you could also just do rising and lowering ah one of the warm-ups that happen in a portal room are just ah, ah, a very big sigh a very musical sigh again to get you out of that fight or flight to get the body into a more calm parasympathetic relaxed state where you can kind of get the blood back out to those hands. Now, um, we're going to talk about this in a couple of days, but one of the interesting things is that you can get this response when you go in and have to draw blood. You know, when you have to do the glucose test and you're sitting there going, can I get enough blood to do this? And that is because the blood test has become a nervous system stressor. So maybe next time you're in giving blood and it's a pinprick out of your finger, what you need to do is you just need to sing. All right, on that note, let's wrap this up with another big breath in because breathing, of course, is another way to calm that nervous system. Take a deep breath in and release. And I'll see you back here tomorrow. Take care.